it's me again, Elaine, and for today, we're going to talk about setting boundaries and going against what society expects of you. So I know that's kind of a pretty rebellious title, but bear with me here and just listen to a little bit of storytelling so you would know the context of what I'm trying to say. I think boundaries are crucial if you want to be free. It's ironic, right? It's a paradox. I mean, aren't you supposed to have no limits when you're free? Why are there boundaries? I think freedom is such a great thing once you learn to use it responsibly. Some people use their freedom, unfortunately, to talk about unpleasant things about other people, and I think that's just toxic. I mean, here's a thought. What if we use our freedom to talk nicely about someone, even if that someone is a person that we don't like at all? I mean, Talking shit about people is easy, but finding the good things in the person who you think is just plain bad, that's hard. It's hard because you just want to strangle them and make them see from your perspective, right? But they do have their own perspectives. And their perspectives, their points of view, and your point of view might never meet in the middle. It's like parallel lines. You never meet somewhere or there's no halfway where you meet at all. So what's the solution? I suggest you set boundaries that work for you. Boundaries that challenge you. Boundaries that aren't easy but worthwhile. I mean, talking about someone nicely whom you don't like is setting a boundary that society doesn't expect at all. People might be taken aback by what you're saying because what they expect from you is a violent reaction or a negative response about that person. We just have to accept that some people love and thrive in drama. But I know that's not you. I know you like to shake things up for the better, not the worse. So speaking of shaking things up, here are some tips I have for you on setting boundaries as a rebel or as a person who has a rebel tendency. Number one, about mornings and sleep. Full disclosure, I don't really wake up at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. I wake up around 9 a.m. because I sleep at 2 a.m. because I'm a night owl. And from what I've learned from Gretchen Rubin's book. Being an owl or being a lark if you're a morning person is inherent in a person and you can't really easily change that because that's how your body works but you just have to use it to your advantage. The main point that I'm trying to make here is what's really important in all this is that you have enough sleep because no matter if you wake up early or late if you didn't have enough sleep the night before you're not going to function as optimally as you could i mean do you know the disadvantages of being chronically sleep deprived it's very scary i wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy because i'm a full-time mom and trying to work online and i spend most of my days at home i do have that luxury of setting the alarm a little bit later during the morning and I can imagine and I understand that that's luxury and that most other people don't have that luxury especially if you work in a 9 to 5 or during specific work hours of the day but even though I have that freedom to wake up anytime that I like or anytime that my daughter would wake up life isn't all cupcakes and rainbows because every one of us still has our own responsibilities and roles that we have to fulfill it doesn't mean that one role is better than the other or one role is easier than the other it just means that we do what works for us and we do things differently i mean there are also times when i need to comply with the rest of the world's waking hours like when i have to do errands and it requires for me to be really up early because you know working working hours or office hours or around 9 or 8 p 8 a.m but i think what we could do about our mornings and our sleep as rebels is first of all we get enough sleep and then second of all we make sure that we spend some time for ourselves in the morning or at least allocate some kind of morning routine as soon as we wake up because when you wake up it's the most crucial time of the day it's how you're trying to set the rest of your day so if you wake up groggy of course everybody wakes up groggy 
But if you wake up and then try to grab your phone at the first sign of your eyes opening, then try to scroll through social media, I mean, I'm not trying to judge you, but time could be spent in a much more productive and in a much more meaningful way for you. If you were, let's say, to try not to check in with the world as soon as you wake up, but check in with yourself. First, like for example, once you wake up, you take care of yourself first, you drink a glass of water to liven up the senses, liven up your brain. I mean, you've been asleep for several hours and your brain it might need all that water that it could get. You could probably do some morning routine for you, like washing your face or eating your breakfast or doing an exercise or meditating. Meditating is a good thing first thing in the morning, but if you don't have that time, then at least take care of yourself and then take care of the rest of the people in your home. So you have to set your own boundaries when it comes to waking up and sleeping. You have to also know what kind of person you are. Are you an owl or a lark? An owl is a night person and a, and a lark is a morning person. So if you're an owl, don't try to be a lark. And if you're a lark, why are you even trying to be an owl? <laughs> You don't have to pressure yourself to wake up to 5 a.m. wake up call just because the rest of the world says that it's the time that CEOs and presidents and everybody else who's successful wakes up. You need to define your own version of success. So boundaries when it comes to mornings looks like knowing when it's comfortable for you to sleep because you know the strategy of convenience always works for rebels so if it's comfortable for you to sleep at this hour then go do it and if that and if you're getting enough rest and you feel rested and you're able to wake up energized then maybe it's working for you and maybe you could leverage that to your advantage so number two is time management and monitoring how we spend our lives is essentially how we use our time for rebel tendencies it's hard enough that we don't stick to a predefined schedule and now we also have to monitor our activities. I think we should stick to what works best for us, as I always say. But also, not be afraid to challenge ourselves to try new things. I mean, if someone recommends calendar blocking, why not try if it works? I mean, what if it works for you? What if calendar blocking is a thing you really want to do so even if you're not a holder, you're a rebel, you're just going to push through it because it's what you want. And if not, if it doesn't work out for you, then you can just try other methods instead. I mean, there's no law that says you shall do calendar blocking or else. But the beauty of trying to manage your time and monitor it is that we are able to know where are ours, where are ours. That was are going and you become more aware of the things that you're spending your life minutes on once we're aware we're able to question ourselves is four hours of facebook instagram scrolling or netflix movie marathoning worth it or not when you know the answer to that question you can set boundaries for yourself you can set healthy boundaries with regards to how you manage your time boundaries when it comes to time management and monitoring looks like being able to point out what activities are consuming your time and whether these activities are the kind of things that you want to do daily in your life and if these activities are helping you go after the kind of life that you would like to have and whether those activities are in alignment with your goals and who you are as a person. Number three is exercise. I can imagine you already know all the benefits of exercise. And yet, even if we know that it enhances our overall being as a human, we still can't stick to it on a regular basis. Exercise is a vital part in any endeavor. If you're a full-time mom or a part-time mom or a working mom or if you're not a mom but you're a dad or if you don't have kids at all but you're very busy in your life and you're very busy in your career and work, you want to start your own business, exercise requires us to spend energy but it also gives back that energy tenfold. I mean, I don't have the research that it gives us tenfold, but you know what I mean. And for my fellow rebels out there, 
One of the strategies that we depend on is the strategy of clarity, remember? And if we don't exercise or move our body, we won't have that maximum clarity that we need. Boundaries when it comes to exercise look like being able to move your body and knowing your limits. I mean, it's not good to over-exercise because you'll just exhaust yourself. And there's no point in under-exercising either because you're not moving your body to its full potential. So limits look different for every person, so you really need to listen to your body because it's telling you the things that you need to do. Number four, okay, number four is values. I mean, should people still set boundaries when it comes to their values? Aren't values a good thing already? I believe so. But too much of anything, your mom is right, too much of anything is a bad idea. Too much of anything is bad. I mean, when you love someone, things are good. But if you love them too much that you're giving everything you have to them and you're giving your all to them, you're not leaving anything for yourself, there will be a lot of tears. And I mean, a lot of tears and ugly cry faces. Just kidding. People react differently to love. Anyway, you get my point. When you love someone too much and you don't leave anything for yourself, you will burn out. You will tire yourself needlessly. I think the best way to love other people is to love yourself first. Boundaries when it comes to your values look like making sure you know what you value first and not being too rigid about it. When you know what you value, you know what kind of limits to set. In conclusion, freedom requires limits. You need to know who you are in order to set your own boundaries. What do you really want and what does it take to go after your goal? When you know the answer to that question, you can create your life and work on your own terms. And it's also important to listen to the people who care about you and who support you. You don't have to do everything that they say that you should do because you know what's best for you. But if you listen to them, you might learn a thing or two from what they're saying. But don't let their opinions shape every decision you make. The most important boundary of all is between you and other people. Take their opinions respectfully, but please also know what works for you and what you believe in. Because at the end of the day, your life is about your choices, not other people's. So that's about it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you subscribe. And if you like this video, please like it below. And if you don't, that's okay. okay that was lame. Anyway, okay, bye. Uh, why am I explaining exercise? The path of astrology of exercise. If you just listen to it intently, like very intently. Whatever, Lynn. Whatever.